Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I'm okay, Brian. Last show, the last show of 2022. I think we're doing uh, the preview races for the big Pegasus Day at Gulfstream Park. We are, Matt, but before that, hold your horses on Horse Center. Before that, we, we are going to talk about this horse and a few others. Of course, that's at the center there on our Horse Center page. Matt, it's a very interesting discussion, frankly. I, the glamour division of American racing is the three-year-old male. And I, it's still a question, who is going to win the championship this year? As we, as we noted, this is the last show of the year. We only have a few more days of 2022. We still don't know who the champion is going to be. Epicenter sure has a pretty strong claim to it, Matt. I actually think there's five horses that deserve at least a mention. Mo Donegal was really good this year before uh, going on the shelf. He hasn't run the second half of the year. So the Wood Memorial and the Belmont winner is out. Would you agree with that? I would, yes. Okay. The next horse I probably would eliminate is Cyberknife. Cyberknife. The last two times he faced Taba, I'm talking about the best dirt three-year-olds now. The last two times he faced Taba or Epicenter, which would be the Travers or the Pennsylvania Derby, it was pretty decisive that the other two, Epicenter and Taba, were better than Cyberknife. I would agree with that also, Brian. Yeah, if Cyberknife, the winner of the Grade 1 Arkansas Derby and the Haskell, narrowly over Taba, if he had won the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, I think then we'd have to talk about cyber cyberknife as one of the main uh the the main protagonists here in this story but having lost that narrowly as it was to cody's wish i think cyberknife is the next horse we can eliminate from this discussion fair I enough agree. yep okay all right that leaves us with three and i think there's no wrong answers here with these three Let's talk about Modern Games first, Matt. Modern Games is a turf horse based in Europe, trained by Charlie Appleby, owned by Godolphin. Maybe the best sire in the world is his, is his sire, Dubawi. Modern Games was wonderful as a two-year-old, winning the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf, uh, Juvenile Turf last year out west. We knew how good he was coming in. He won one of the French classics at a mile. Uh, he was second in a couple big races over in Europe, but his re record in Europe was was good, but he was not the best miler in Europe. But his two races over here, the Woodbine Mile and the Breeders' Cup Mile, were fantastic. They were, Brian. Absolutely. He beat he beat older horses in uh, in those races. And you mentioned his races in Europe. He was running against older horses in Europe for the most part. Um, but those races were on grass. Do you even think that Modern Games will be one of the three finalists in the three-year-old division category? Well, we just eliminated Mo Donegal and Cyberknife. So my answer is yes. I think Modern Games will be one of the three finalists. I think he's going to win an Eclipse Award as the champion male turf horse, a very weak category in american racing especially this year but i think he'll be one of the three and i think that's what we've identified with the the, the top three and like i said I, I don't think there are any wrong answers so i think you have modern games a little lower the, w the way you asked me that question but i'm going to say this to you matt was there a better three-year-old male that ran in america this year than modern games Oh, no, I, I didn't ask that question, Brian, because I thought that modern games didn't belong in the, in the Division Three finalists. I asked that question thinking about the people who are going to be voting for the award and whether they will include him enough to be one of the finalists. No, not by any, uh, any uh, uh, thoughts at all. I, I, I'm very pro modern games. You're pro modern games. Okay. Uh, so to answer my last question for me, was there a better three-year-old male that ran in America this year than modern games? 
I would say no, Brian, not when you consider what I said before. He won a Breeders' Cup race. He won one of the top three most prestigious Breeders' Cup races, winning the turf as a three-year-old, defeating older horses, defeating older horses in the Woodbine Mile. Uh, I don't know. That's tough to argue with. It is tough to argue with. Uh, but on the one hand, you made a great point. He beat older horses in both races. On the other hand, you made a great point. It's turf, and turf is different, seen differently in American racing than it than is dirt. Uh, I don't think the Woodbine Mile, the fact that that's north of our border, it's North American racing, it's part of our turf circuit. It's one of our bigger turf races, even though it's just north of the border there uh, at Woodbine. I, I don't think that hurts him. So he's got two really big wins. I do think he's going to win the Eclipse Award as the turf horse, and I think that hurts his chances in the three-year-old male division. I, that, that may be the case, Brian, because, you know, in, in my mind, when it comes Eclipse time, I, I, I feel like I prefer to – spread the awards out, um, and if Modern Games is going to be recognized as the turf male champion, is it someone else's turn to win the three-year-old male division? That's kind of my sentiment, but I, as I said, uh, I'm very pro-Modern uh, Games. And let's face it, Brian, if Taba had won the Breeders' Cup Classic, there would be no discussion going on here. He oh, yeah, that's, that, that's true for Epicenter or Taba. If they had won the Classic, that would have ended the discussion either way. Mm -hmm. uh, the Breeders' Cup mile is, is not looked at the same way as the Breeders' Cup Classic here in American racing, though. And only two races in North America is also something that could be looked on as a bit of a negative for modern games. We it sounds like we both agree that he probably was the best three-year-old male that ran in the country, though. So that's something on his side. But I don't think the turf, I think he's I think they are going to spread out the awards. I don't think the turf champion this year is going to be the three-year-old male champion this year. So I have a feeling modern games is not going to win this award. That leaves Taba and Epicenter. If you look at grade one races, <laughs> Taba's won three, Epicenter has won one. If you're saying Epicenter is going to be the champion. How do you justify three grade one victories to one grade one victory? Uh, I think you have to give serious consideration to, and probably deservedly so, for his performance in the Triple Crown races, and coupled with the fact that he won one of the most prestigious races on the dirt besides the Triple Crown races. In my eyes, it goes the Triple Crown races and the Travers. And he was a convincing winner of the Travers. Taba, Pennsylvania Derby. Okay. Uh, seven Furlong Malibu. Okay. Do either one of them hold uh, a candle near the Travers? And my answer would be no, although the Pennsylvania Derby would be the closest of his three grade one wins. I just don't think the Santa Anita Derby field, now that we know about Messier and Forbidden Kingdom a little bit more, nor certainly the Malibu and, and maybe the seven furlong distance of that race doesn't hold as much water in this discussion. So I think Taba has some questions there with those grade one victories. The other big point, I think, in Epicenter's favor is, is those three grade two victories that he had this year. Those were good races. Every one of them, the Risen Star, the Louisiana Derby, and the Jim Dandy. Not all grade ones are the same. And, and I look at his four graded stakes wins, and if you, if you didn't know which one was a grade one, which one was grade two, you looked at the fields that he won four times this year versus Tabus three, I think the edge goes towards Epicenter. The Breeders' Cup Classic, Taba gets credit for running third behind the very, very good older horses, flight line and Olympiad. Epicenter didn't have a chance, though. He got hurt in the race. How much credit does Taba get for his third in the Breeders' Cup Classic? 
Good question, Brian. Uh, um, in, in my eyes, you know, I, I, I feel like uh, Epicenter, his biggest uh, barrier in winning the award is, is the recency factor. But my feeling is that uh, it's going to be it's going to be very close. And I think that Epicenter is going to get the award. All right, you, you, you beat me to it, Matt. The last two things I wanted to talk about was recency, which favors Taba, obviously, as he just won the Malibu uh, in, 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 last week and, and the Breeders' Cup Classic where he was third before that and, and the Pennsylvania Derby happened after the Travers. So recency certainly in Taba's favor. But I think if you look at the whole year, as far as the dirt horses, you look at the whole year, I think Epicenter gets my slight nod there are no wrong answers, Matt, between the top three, though, in my mind, Epicenter, Taba, and Modern Games. We yeah. agree. Though. Yeah, I agree. We're, we're agreed on uh, Epicenter, so we'll yes. see what happens. We'll find out in about a month when the Eclipse Awards are announced, but a very, very interesting race for the three-year-old male champion. Without further ado, Matt, we're going to jump in. We have two races from Gulfstream Park. The championship meeting now is going on at Gulfstream Park. There's two good races. They're both preps for the Pegasus World Cup or the Pegasus World Cup turf. Let's start on the dirt mat. We're gonna look at this pace projector right away here. Uh, the favorite on the morning line, clear favorite on the morning line, Matt, is the one, that's O'Connor. He is a Chilean import. Sappy Joseph has him in his barn and he looked really good in his American debut. He did, Brian. Uh, um, First American start, only American start, a, a big six-length victory in an allowance, of course, with Safi Joseph right there on the Gulfstream Park track. Yeah, Safi Joseph does well at Gulfstream. This horse has a win over the Gulfstream Park track. That's his only race in America. He was a Group 1 winner, going a little bit longer than this nine furlongs of the Harlan's Holiday here, the Grade 3 Harlan's Holiday on Saturday at Gulfstream Park. I think off that win, a six-length allowance romp over two months ago, he is going to be the clear favorite. I think the morning line maker has it right. Uh, an impressive win, for sure. It'd be decent allowances, horses going away. There is some question, though, about the pace of this race. And if we look at give a closer look to the pace projector, you'll see that there's no speed up there in the upper right-hand corner of the projector. And you'll see that uh, the four simplification is the horse expected to be on the lead? O'Connor is fourth. He could be farther back than that. We'll have to see what the favorite does in here. But uh, I don't think that's uh, something that's in O'Connor's favor in this race setup. Yeah, and and certainly the with the pace projector summary saying no speed and then showing uh, a simplification uh, way out front on the pace in the early. Uh, yeah. To me, that that's an indication that this race has got no speed and, and I don't know, you could, you, maybe you could put some other horses out there also. Uh, it's hard to know how this race is going to be run early. Right. And, and, and judging from this time form U S pace projector simplification would be the one most likely to take advantage of the lack of early pace in here. Uh, we'll go back to the two real quick, Matt. Pioneer Medina was not good in the Kentucky Derby. He came back after a layoff and was not good in his first two starts back. But then he got back off uh, off the schneid a little bit last time, winning an allowance race at Churchill Downs. I don't think it was a particularly strong allowance race. But this horse ran some good races earlier in the year, and I think he's a threat and a little bit longer odds for trainer Todd Fletcher. Yeah, he did run well on that, what has become – a, a very challenging uh, derby trail through the races at uh, fairgrounds. He was third in the Louisiana Derby. He did well in one of the other preps at uh, fairgrounds. Uh, the wheels came off in the Kentucky Derby, and that happens to a lot of horses that turn out to be good horses, time off, and, and finally back in the winner's circle for uh, Pletcher, uh, not a horse that I would completely eliminate as a contender. Yeah, likely fourth choice probably. And he's a horse, uh, he's behind O'Connor here on the pace projector, but I, I've seen him 
be very close to the pace earlier and and i think he might show more speed than o'connor actually so uh, an interesting horse to think about certainly the four we started to talk about a simplification is a horse with a big shot third on the morning line at five to one that sounds really good to me matt he likes gulfstream park two-time stakes winner at gulfstream park early this year including impressive win in the grade two fountain of youth he ran a good race in the florida derby he doesn't always show speed but with the lack of pace in this one it seems like he should darn well show speed here. Yeah, I agree, Brian. Simplification is coming out of a pretty lackluster looking performance last time in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, but he had a tough go of it early, bumped, squeezed in between horses. He finished seventh in that Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. This is not as tough a race as the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. He's back at the track he likes, so simplification certainly a big threat in here the other horse i think will get that is the other sappy joseph joining the chilean import o'connor as sappy joseph's two in here is the seven skippy longstocking he's got a little bit of speed he beat simplification pretty nicely in the west virginia derby that was on a sloppy track but skippy longstocking before a poor race last time put together some pretty nice races in there including that west virginia derby win yeah, that's for sure, Brian. Uh, um, the West Virginia Derby win. Let's not forget the third in the Belmont Stakes. Yes, his uh, ninth place in uh, Pennsylvania Derby was uh, uh, a bit of a head scratcher. Uh, the, the pace projector seems to show Skippy Longstocking parked on the outside. I don't know what that's all about. I think if uh, they decide to go with him just a little bit, that he should be able to get get good position early in the race. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about the uh, the, the three path that he seems to be on there in the pace projector. But Skippy Longstocking certainly ran some good races. Maybe the best two were the third in the Belmont behind Mo Donegal and Nest, and then the win in the. West Virginia Derby, where he beat a simplification, but again, that was a sloppy track. Yeah, he should so show some uh, get up and go to probably be one of the ones tracking simplification early. They've run against each other, the other a bunch already. I always thought simplification was the better horse. Sloppy West Virginia Derby, who knows? Then in the Pennsylvania Derby, simplification ran much better than Skippy Longstocking did. Maybe Skippy just didn't show up that day, but he hasn't run since. So I, th I think there is a question. He gets our Rad Ortiz, though. He should get a pretty aggressive ride. The rest of them are long shots. Uh, South Bend has done some nice things in the past. Cook Creek looked good, maybe as a two-year-old, but not so much this year. Clapton's kind of an improving three-year-old. Strike Hard's certainly one of several in here that have won at Gulfstream Park before. I think we've identified the top four, though, Matt. Is that right for you as well? I'm comfortable with that, Brian, yes. All right. So that is the Harlan's Holiday. You have to run good in the Harlan's Holiday if you want to show up in a month in the $3 million Pegasus World Cup. We're going to go from the dirt at Gulfstream Park, Matt, to the turf and uh, maybe a more interesting betting race here. <coughs> Excuse me. So we see a 12 horse field here. In fact, there's an also eligible decorated invader who has a lot of back class. So if the 13 somehow got in because of a scratch. I wouldn't completely throw out the 13. He's not listed here in the pace projector, Matt, uh, but we see a different kind of pace on the turf. The other one said slow pace, the Harlan Holiday, the Fort Lauderdale, the prep for the Pegasus World Cup turf shows a fast pace and they have the eight win from within as the speediest of the speed. Yeah, they certainly do. Uh, uh, win from within. Uh, speed horse uh, last time was fifth in an, in an allowance race at Keeneland back in October. But is you know, is a past stakes winner not too far back. He won the Red Bank uh, at Monmouth Park in September. But... Uh, I agree. Uh, I think his best chance is to go to the lead and see how far he can take it. Yeah, and it'll probably be a little bit of a long shot coming out of a, a not a great race. But like you said, it, it wasn't that long ago that he was a stakes winner on the grass. And uh, a lot of speed there, but 
fast pace because there's other speed horses in the race. The one street ready has been running well. He's on the rail. He should be out there. And then you got the 10 King cause who has, is going better than ever for Tranker and coming off a really nice win in New York. Yeah, that's for sure. He was the winner of the uh, Knickerbocker uh, grade three in October. There are uh, a few horses in this field that ran behind him in that race. He also has a nice second in a, in a overnight handicap race at Kentucky Downs. And a nice allowance win out at Del Mar. So uh horse that takes uh, his race, whatever track he's at. And, you know, like you said, Mike Maker seems to have this guy in the best form of his career. Yeah, those last three races going coast to coast, Del Mar, California, Kentucky to New York, uh, very, very good for King Cause. Uh, he doesn't need the lead, but his best race ever was last time where he got a pretty easy lead in that knickerbocker and i don't think this is a race where he's going to get an easy lead because i think that uh win from within and, and and street ready are both nice horses and certainly fast so king cause will have to probably come from just off the pace but it's looking like we're going to get a fast pace in here matt which makes me very interested in this race for horses that can close and uh, there are a bunch of interesting closers. I guess we need to start with the 12. You'll see Colonel Liam, the 12 here on the pace projector, pretty far out of the pace. He likes to rally, but he's certainly not a, a, a deep closer. The class of the race, Matt, he's won the Pegasus World Cup turf the last two years. He's, he's closing in on $2 million, but we haven't seen him now for nine full months. Yes, yeah, certainly the class of the race, an overwhelming class edge uh, over this field. Um, aside from, you know, uh, the, the two wins in the Pegasus World Cup, he's got another win at Gulfstream Park. He's three for three in his career at Gulfstream Park. Yes, he has been off since making a trip uh, to Dubai after the Pegasus World Cup turf last year. Uh, but... Uh, he loves the track, and, and Todd Pletcher is pretty darn good at having horses ready to run off a long layoffs. And if if uh, Colonel Liam is close to his top form, he's going to be formidable in this race. Absolutely, Matt. Formidable is uh, is a good way to say it. Uh, I ride Ortiz again on a uh, key member of this field. Colonel Liam, hey, he, like, like Matt said, uh, he, he is clearly the class of the race with those two Pegasus World Cup turf victories over this turf course of Gulfstream Park. Classy. He's, uh, he's only been beaten uh, three times on the turf in his career. But the layoffs, the layoffs are, are concerning. Uh, he did it once before, came back, and was just fine doing it. But now he's got an even longer layoff, nine months. And the Dubai World Cup, uh, Dubai turf over there on Dubai World Cup day was not such a good race for him. And who knows, the trip overseas, the nine months off, he's got an outside post. So he's got to try to find good position in this big field. I also think he's going to be a pretty heavy favorite. The morning line says, just like uh, O'Connor in the Harlan's Holiday, Colonel Liam is a pretty big favorite on the morning line in this Fort Lauderdale. So I, I at least think there are some reasons why we might take a shot to beat him. Maybe the most likely horse to beat him, Matt, is the seven, City Man. You realize City Man, the New York bred, has uh, already won four stakes races in 2022. Yeah, New York bred, you said, Brian. Uh, two of those stakes wins were in New York bred stakes races. Um, but of course he has run well in open company. He was second in the Bernard Baruch, a grade three. He won the forbidden apple. Those were back in the summer uh, um, uh, when turf racing was at its peak. So uh, he's not just a New York bred. He can run against open company. Yeah, he's coming off two New York bred stakes wins. And I tell you what, there's a lot of good New York bred turf horses and they're running in those races. Uh, you know, maybe some like at Hot Brown wasn't in those last two races, but there are a lot of good New York bred turf races, uh, horses and City Man is running against some good horses in that. But then you just look 
a little farther back, like you said, that win in the Forbidden Apple at Saratoga was really excellent. And he and he's won the Dangerous Hour against uh, Open Company earlier in the year as well. So City Man, certainly a big threat in really good form. He is a horse who, like Colonel Liam, is not a stone cold closer map, but uh, he can come from off the pace a little bit too. Um, Shadow Sphinx is the other maker horse in here. Uh, Pau Alto is a uh, French import that hasn't been in the barn of Graham Motion very long, uh, but I think he's run a couple good races over here already and certainly could break through. My old friend Tango 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 is another horse who's kind of versatile in his running style but can come from off the pace. Uh, who am I forgetting? Kentucky Ghost, the six. If you want a horse who can rally on a fast pace map, Vicky Oliver's Kentucky Ghost, when he comes running, he's a dangerous horse. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. And and uh, like you said, the the speed in in this race, the, but the speed is questionable uh, in terms of, uh, of of class and how far they'll carry it. Um, and with the layoff and Colonel Liam, you know, the, this is the kind of race where you know Colonel Liam could easily win it as a favorite, but all those questions a bomb could win this race too a bomb could win this race and i think if that happens matt it's going to be a bomb from out uh, uh, from off the pace and i think there are several good candidates to do it that we've mentioned here uh good governance first race from chad brown maybe not one that i'm uh, uh liking a whole lot marwa the three-year-old probably is a little bit lesser than this even carpenter's call would not completely shock me but he'd be a little bit of a surprise as well, but it's a pretty wide open race if, if not, uh, Colonel Liam does not come back with his A game. If he comes back with his A game, I think we agree he'll probably win it. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay, so we have the Harlands Holiday and the uh, Fort Lauderdale Gulfstream Park on Saturday as our races of the week. That, that was our analysis. These are preps to see if they belong in the Pegasus World Cup, the Pegasus World Cup turf. Matt, are you ready to reveal your top picks for these races? Absolutely. All right, I'm gonna let you go first. Harlan's Holiday, please. Harlan's Holiday, Brian. Uh, to me, uh, the two horses that have the class in the field are the two horses that we seem to have picked. Uh, I've got Skippy Longstocking, you've got Simplification. I'll let you talk more about why you like Simplification. Um, I'm not going with simplification. I, I, I said it before. I think I said it before his last race that I had I'd had enough of simplification. And to me, the only reason to pick simplification is his past record at Gulfstream Park, which is fantastic. But that was a long time ago. Um, I'm going to go with Skippy Longstocking uh, uh, in this race. I, I think I. I'm willing to give him a pass on the Pennsylvania Derby. And if I do that, um, he's my pick. Yeah, he looks pretty good if you're willing to give him a pass on the Pennsylvania Derby and, and the slight layoff. But if he was starting to feel the effects of a long campaign, maybe the break, uh, maybe now Safi Joseph has him ready to roll again. And Skippy Longstocking certainly is threatened here. I'm not done with simplification. The Antonio <laughs> Sano train, not this time. I think he does have the most speed in this race, but he ran all those good races over this track early this year, a bunch of them, Matt. And uh, without a lot of pace in here, I like him to get out there. All these losses of late for him are grade one races. Almost every single race he's run since the Florida Derby was a grade one race. Don't forget he was fourth in the Kentucky Derby and not all that far away from Rich Strike. So classy horse, got the setup in here loves Gulfstream Park. For me, it's simplification. Fort Lauderdale, let's see. Fort, oh, we Neither of us picked the favorite, a dangerous favorite in the Harlan's Holiday, but uh, I see you're on the chalk in the Fort Lauderdale. I am, Brian. Uh, um, the class edge over the field, and then quite frankly, uh, uh, I had a lot of difficulty deciding what horse might be the upset horse in this field, you know, choosing from three, four, five possibilities that made me say, okay, 
if Colonel Liam is at his best, I think he's going to win the race again. I can't disagree with that. If Colonel Liam's at the at his best, he should win this race. But I don't want him at the odds. I don't want him coming out from the 12th hole off a nine-month layoff from a uh, not great race in Dubai. So I'm going to try to beat him. Why not? A lot, of, Like I said, there's a lot of good horses in, uh, with odds in here. Uh, City Man is is a, probably a deserving second choice, and King Cause probably a deserving third choice off their recent form. But Kentucky Ghost, Kentucky Ghost is it is a little bit of an in and outer, the son of Ghost Zapper, but I've seen him run a lot of good, come from way behind races here in Kentucky, and he's done it elsewhere. I think this race sets up nice with a fast pace, nine furlongs. I think he'll be double digits on the odds board, Matt. So Kentucky goes for me as my top pick in the Fort Lauderdale. Folks, I hope those top picks help you. Matt and I are reasonably good with giving you horses to think about or even winning with our top picks. Good luck, Matt. Let, let me get a parting shot from you. You've already told us Epicenter, Colonel Liam, and Skippy Longstocking. What else do you have for us today? Yeah, I think our top picks did pretty well last week, uh, uh, Brian, actually. Uh, yeah, it's been an interesting uh, interesting year in racing in 2022. The Triple Crown Series, all the attention the three-year-olds have had, uh, both on the track and off the track. Uh, uh, it certainly has been an interesting year, and I'm looking forward to 2023 season of Horse Center. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for watching. Can't say it any better than that. You're you're the reason why we're here every week. We uh, we love our audience out there in Horse Center Land. Uh, good luck this week with your wagers. We also want to thank our sponsor, uh, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. Matt, uh, also to Timeform US for those excellent pace projectors we are uh, now using regularly here on Horse Center. O'Connor could be any kind, but I think Matt and I are going to pick you, give you a winner there in that uh, Harlan's Holiday. And uh, hey, I got a long shot. Matt's on the favorite in in the Fort Lauderdale. I think one of those two horses is going to win too. We'll see. We'll see if we're right. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. We'll be back next week with another big episode of Horse Center. We'll see you then.